hopefully. Did anybody get a notification that it's being recorded? Yes. Oh, yeah. Perfect, perfect. All right, finally, it got, it got that to me. I'm going to just share my screen really quickly. Thank you for being on the call this morning. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, we just wanted to just take a minute and make sure um, to get everybody on the same page. Um, just, you know, we, we just appreciate each and every person that um, helps us or is a part of the Tech Accelerator program. And I always make make it a point to say thank you to anybody who's a member um, who's come to us for help and trusted us with their dream. It means a lot. So um, just uh, the purpose of today, first of all, um, we always want to just you know, we'll clarify kind of the program purpose, um, our high level purpose. Of course, it's uh, business, business and business at the end of the day. Um, number two, we want to give you kind of a, an overview of our current exploratory process. Um, we've been in the property um, using it as an incubator space for 14 years, but for 25 years prior to that, it was a city hall. So um, we just want to give you an update in terms of where our headspace is at. And um, we want to also just kind of reaffirm our commitment to the success of the small business community and to anybody who's working with us. And um, then finally, we we talked a little bit of, um, before the meeting started about Linda's wonderful um, opportunity to, uh, to retire. So we just want to give everybody an update on the administrative services, um, uh, you know, that uh, an update on that, her position, and make sure everybody's aware um, that we do have a smooth transition uh, planned. And that finally, um, we'll, we'll take any questions that you might have. So, um, of course, our why is to help the small business community. When we launched this program, it was during the Great Recession. So um, no shock that a lot of big business locations to not just surprise, but the entire market, they were going on hold. Um, there, was a, there was a lot of um, you know, uncertainty in the market. A lot of people were losing their jobs. Um, but the upside was is that there were a lot of people um, talented losing their jobs, but also budding entrepreneurs um, who wanted a place to start a business. So we had an enterprising um, city manager who um, happened to go to MIT who knew something about business incubation and encouraged us to take a look at that. And we were just hooked ever since. So um, we were moving out of our old city hall building and we decided to repurpose the space and reuse it. And um, it's been great. We, we did it on a shoestring. We always have done it on a shoestring, but we were really, really doing it on a, on a shoe, shoestring for the first seven or eight years. And then um, we got a little bit of money to rehab the space and creative re creatively rename uh, conference rooms into mustache rooms and um, create some co-working space and really expand the program. But the purpose of the program is really um, been a one um, rooted in a term called economic gardening. It's been a place where we want to foster um, a community of collaboration um, amongst small businesses of all kinds. Um, the space um, itself is dedicated to businesses that um, are, are innovative, are scalable, and intend to grow jobs in our community. And uh, but beyond that, we we have not turned a business away, um, even if they're not um, an innovation fit or, you know, they're not doing something, something that has a patent. Um, we always want to find a way to help everybody. And then over the last five years, we've also, as many of you know, found ways to help some international companies. So um, we've really branched out and grown our mission, and it's been a really exciting adventure. But we know as um, innovators, as a, as a group that gets involved with innovators, um, that we have to keep innovating. Um, it's always great to celebrate your successes, but we're always in search of how do we grow this? How do we keep in, um, how do we keep relevant? How do we, um, make sure that we're a good steward of not only surprise but the entire ecosystem of the West Valley. Um, we have purposefully named this the AZ Tech Accelerator, not the Surprise Tech Accelerator, um, because we want it to be in place where we're engaging the entire West Valley. But that said, we liked from the from the get go, we liked the fact that it was in our original town site. Um, we thought it was a really good opportunity for us to maybe not so passively, but kind of passively um, um, 
you know, give some opportunities to the local community. So we've worked closely with, um, you know, a lot of different programs of HUD. We got a grant a few years back to renovate some space um, and to even try some micro grant programs. So we've we've done a lot to really try to reach out to the local community and really, you know, give everybody an opportunity to um, create a business and create jobs. So that's our purpose. So um, a, a year ago, gosh, I think it was a year ago, um, I was um, tearing my hair out writing um, an economic development administration grant. And if you're not familiar with the EDA, um, it's a it's a federal uh, program. Um, it's uh, it, you know, it's it's there for the purposes of helping economic development communities really um, turn around after a recovery. Uh, or turn around after a disaster, recover after a disaster, um, um, help the underserved. And they tend to gravitate projects towards projects that um, have some brick and mortar element. They like to do tenant improvements. Um, they will do ground up, uh, but they're they're constantly looking for ways to help communities really have a turnaround story. And so um, we had an opportunity, and this was the biggest one um, that the Economic Development Administration had ever released. It was part of the Build Back Better Regional Challenge. And um, about a year and a half ago, the Biden administration put this out, and it was it was a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. They really wanted to make bold moves, and those bold moves were not just in economic recovery. Those were big, bold moves in um, creating and embracing better diversity outcomes. And we knew in surprise that we had a great story to tell. And um, our partners at the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, who uh, we've been a part of for almost 30 years, uh, were we're leading a grant initiative for the region and we put our hands up and said you know we've got a really good story to tell we have some know-how um, in helping our our startup business community um, and we want to be a part of this so we've always had this aspiration and surprise to really um, increase our level of technical expertise we organically have um, grown businesses and not aimed at a specific sector so at the beginning i talked about companies that were innovative scalable etc um, but we very purposefully never um, said we're going after one type of business or another and a lot of incubators do that we candidly never wanted to limit ourselves, but um, by osmosis organically over the last more than a decade, um, a lot of our deal flow has been in the healthcare medical technology space. And so we started really taking a look at that. Um, the, the West Valley itself um, has a, a healthcare talent pop population, a big talent pool um, that we you know, started to take a look at. So maybe that's a reason why a lot of our inventions and a lot of our technologies that were, were coming to us happen to be in the medical tech healthcare space. Um, also, you know, we, we observe that, you know, both Surprise and the West Valley overall, um, and there are a lot of reasons for this. Um, we overall have a lower wage than folks in the East Valley, where the East Valley has grown, um, you know, they're 30 years, 40 years in some cases ahead of us. And um, further in the West Valley, where we noticed a big gap when it came to technical space. And for a while, um, the city of Peoria had some, that program went away. Um, and so there's this huge opportunity where no one is really serving, um, not not meaningfully. I mean, we 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 love to serve companies, but we're almost MacGyvering it. You know, we're we're trying to create wet lab space out of a sink and um, you know, just different things, but it's not a true purpose build space to help those innovation companies. Another thing we've kind of noticed over the last few years, um, and if you're a resident of Surprise, you'll really appreciate this. Um, there is just something about um, the location of the tech accelerator um, that a lot of people don't recognize as the city of Surprise. Um, people will assume that it's a Sun City amenity, or they'll assume it's in El Mirage, or they just won't know it exists at all. And um, so a part of that we just and, and people think that about a lot of entities on the other side of Grand. And so every community has something like this where, you know, there's an area of the community where people just don't naturally gravitate or they just don't identify it as um, a prominent 
location identifiable in the community. So um, the other thing is that as we looked at the purpose of um, the Biden administration grant, um, we had to really look hard and had to ask, are we we're in an underserved neighborhood? We're in an area that's 61 percent Hispanic, 51, 52 um, percent uh, women. And are we really serving that community? And, and when we looked at the data, we looked at who we'd been serving over the last more than a decade. And the answer was no, that we have missed um, reaching um, a diverse population. And also, um, because of that market barrier, you know, we started looking at ways that we could really uh, work more over the last six years that Ottawa University has been in our community. And um, we thought, you know, we can really do better. We really want to make sure that we're giving students a hands on experience and um, that they're integrated into our, our incubator. And we discovered that, you know, if, um, you know, the, the, the distance, the, the 60, all of it made a difference. And that if we could just create more services on campus, that that could go a long way. And you, you can see this, most incubators uh, for that reason are based on university campuses. And so that's, that's the reason for it. It really gives um, a lot to the entrepreneur and it gives a lot back to the emerging workforce and the emerging entrepreneurs. So um, anyway, so, you know, organically we had this focus, so we got we got into this grant, um, we, we created a concept, um, the the concept was applauded, but um, the the grant ultimately went to 20 different out of we were 60, we were in a group of 60 um, communities out of 540 that were selected for phase one and then the phase two, the big grant that would have helped us build this, we were not selected for. There were about 20 out of the 60 that were selected and they tended to be in um, like more distressed communities. So, you know, think Detroit, think Louisiana, there were there were areas that were selected that, um, you know, you know, even even had worse outcomes than you know, we're recording here. So um, anyway, um, but it really opened our eyes. And uh, so for that reason, I, you know, we're, we're constantly looking for ways that we can better integrate programming um, near Ottawa University and candidly near um, a lot of other economic development services right here on the civic and education campus where I'm sitting today. So what's next? Um, number one, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit. We're just exploring what are some short term, what are some long term programmatic opportunities where here at City Hall um, we can with Ottawa better um, give entrepreneurship services um, to the community. So over the next 90 days, we're we're working with Ottawa, we'll be working with Chet Kaiser and his team um, to really identify, is there a space where um, people could also, in addition to the tech accelerator, um, pop in, leave a card, uh, leave a note, um, it, it, and, you know, worst case, you know, we can probably um, figure that out and we can welcome people into City Hall. But we're working on ways we can be a little more visible at our civic campus. Um, so, and Deborah is already doing this. Deborah's done an amazing job at making sure each and every person, mentor, company, anybody who touches the tech accelerator, um, is success planning. Um, she's hosting Make Your Mark meetings. That's very intentional. Um, we're looking at ways that we can really make sure we're we're helping every single company, um, not just you know flounder for years and years and years, but that you're really hitting benchmarks. Um, that we're really identifying what are your pain points, but ultimately we want to make sure. We're doing all that we can to make sure everybody that's on the campus in particular is successful in meeting their objectives. So and, and we'll continue to um, oh, I'm sorry, I misnumbered. <laughs> I'll I'll do it right in the next presentation. Um, we'll explore any and all funding opportunities um, to um, you know continue to do this. So we're looking at funding opportunities to potentially retrofit um, some specialized space um, at Ottawa University. We're having conversations with the development community. There's a lot of exciting development happening around our civic, our civic center campus um, at City Center. So there are a ton of really interesting options, um, and you know we found just creating the business plan, just creating that that vision 
through the EDA uh, grant process was a really good exercise for us because that's finally that's something that the development community um, can kind of hang their hat on. We know what we know what a building costs now or to some extent uh, we know um, sort of what our need to haves and nice to haves are. So that's been a really good exercise. So we're exploring any and all funding opportunities to really create that specialized space um, with uh, Ottawa University. And then um, also, you know, we we don't know. I mean, we're we own the property free and clear. We're we're just we're trying to do what's best um, from a, a highest and best use of the property, um, which we did initially when we made it a business incubator. It is entirely publicly owned. It is taxpayer funded. So we want to make sure whatever we do um, that we're a good steward um, of the community and just continue to respect the the heritage of the area that the, that that it's in. Um, and but also we we rec represent the acceleration of the economy and do what's best um, for the overall. So we haven't landed on what what is Plan B. We haven't landed on that. We've explored some some great options, but um, you know what's you know, multifamily looks great today, but, um, you know, it's slowing and does it look good in six months? We don't, you know, we don't know that. Um, does retail look good today? Maybe it won't in six months. So um, we're digging deep. Um, we don't have to figure it out in six months. Um, so, um, and no one is, no one is uh, kicking us out. There's no um, timeline here, um, but we're just doing that analysis to make sure um, that whatever we do, it would be in the highest and best use for the overall community. And then finally, um, over the next two years, likely, um, we'll, we'll um, find that best use and create some sort of transition plan that really um, help shows um, a robust relationship with Ottawa, helping even more entrepreneurs being more visible and, and really widening the net to help all all of the community with their needs. So um, the, our goal, and it's again, it's just a, I love to set goals. So Deborah and Linda and everybody knows this. Um, I love, you know, the that's get what gets measured gets done. I, I love to have a goal that by January 1st, 2025, that, you know, we, we sort of have a plan. So that's my, that's my over, and, you know, a lot can change in two years, but so that's really our intention. And so that and we will continue to communicate. So our, we are committed to um, our, our partners, to our companies. And so our promise to you is that no one is going to just be left behind. We, we um, want to make that really, really clear. Um, so all everything we're talking about is hypothetical. It's more than two years away, and probably as far as we know. Um, so these are just things we're doing to grow our services, not to diminish our services, and we don't want to leave anybody behind. No business will be kicked out. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, we have a process. Everybody that is in the tech accelerator at some point signed a contract. There's a, there is a mutual out cause. You're all, you're also not trapped by any means. It's the most at will agreement. Um, we we want to over communicate. And um, we'd rather under promise and over deliver. We don't want anybody to feel like, um, you know, that they'll, they're just left in the lurch. Um, we would never want to do that. We want everybody that touches the program to have a success story. So over the next couple of years, my promise is also that we will regularly communicate uh, progress towards um, our goals in this exploratory process. And so everybody will feel informed and that, you know, that the sky is not falling. We never want anybody to feel like they're just um, left in, in the dark here. So um, now maybe on a on another note um, and maybe a similar one, um, we also aim to provide 100 percent of the services that you deserve as somebody that's part of the Tech Accelerator. So first we'll start with congratulating Linda. Um, Linda um, has had an amazing career with us. We're so sad to see her go, but so happy for her um, uh, announced retirement. Um, and that date is February 17. Um, so it's right around the corner. So we'll at least we get to squeeze her for Valentine's Day and wish her well before she goes. Um, but just so everybody knows this, um, Linda could have retired um, a while ago, but opted to defer that to make sure that we had some, again, coverage of 
the tech accelerator and city hall and um, we have an admin many of you have met uh, jen hensley uh, jen hensley was at the tech accelerator she was the linda so to speak um, for a few years before she transitioned over to the city hall um, economic development department front desk and um, uh, so Jen has lots of experience at the Tech Accelerator and at the front desk. Linda um, has been, as you all know, helping us during Jen's FMLA leave. Um, Jen will be back this week, and um, so they will have some crossover, but this position um, will be able to provide coverage for the Tech Accelerator and the Economic Development Desk here at City Hall uh, while we actively recruit for Linda's position. So yes, we're recruiting for Linda's position. Um, if you know um, somebody amazing um, like a Linda out there, uh, please encourage them to reach out to apply and let me know if they have any questions. Um, the position should be posted this week on the City of Surprise website. Just go to surpriseaz.gov and it should be under human resources. There'll be an option to look for those positions. And finally, I think um, I'll stop sharing my screen. This is a chance. Uh, first, please know if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. This is my email address. I'll also say, give you my direct phone number, um, and that's not the tech one. It is 623-222-3327. Um, so feel free to grab that. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And at this point, um, I, let's see, I don't see any questions in the chat, but if you have any questions at all, um, just feel free to let me know or um, you're welcome to hop on the same same call um, on uh, Thursday, I think, or Thursday, the, the 9th, mm -hmm. um, same same channel, same bat channel. <laughs> if um, you know you thought of anything or want to hop back in, but um, any any questions? Uh, Janine, are there any other grant opportunities or opportunities to apply for some funding that are more short term that might be looked at? Great question. So the um, Economic Development Administration, my understanding is, is that um, they're releasing um, funding, um, you know, they have it on a rolling basis. Um, it's not the large scale. This one, it was like a hundred and it was like a hundred million dollar regional right. grant and we applied for 20 million. So probably not to that scale, um, but there are plenty of, we'll say in the three to five million dollar range. So that's why we're looking for retrofit opportunities potentially. Um, we're also looking at a lot of agencies are copying um, the EDA. So the National Science Foundation just put one out that um, we we partnered with um, Westmark on. And if if successful in that, we'll be eligible for a hundred and sixty million dollar grant. So um, better believe I'll go after that one. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the there are a few out there, but um, candidly, you know, the kind of part of looking at um, you know, what are some opportunities for reuse of the space? We we also want to see if there are opportunities to uh, land lease or we don't want to ever dispose of the property. I mean, and candidly, it would have to go for voter approval if we did that. But we're looking for ways that maybe we could creatively finance, um, you know, in a space that might host more technical companies where we just know there's a big gap in the market. So um, it's a great question. There, there aren't any to the scale in the short term from the Economic Development Administration that I'm aware of, but we'll we'll continue to look at options. Also, um, you know, we're um, we're looking at uh, we we have a um, contingency fund within the Economic Development Department, and it's small. It's a million dollars per year. Um, so we'll look at ways maybe we can utilize that. Um, so. Everything's on the table. We're 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 committed to helping the small business community, and we're committed to working with Ottawa and meeting that objective. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions? All right. Well, hey, I did a. I guess we did a good job at uh, covering covering all our bases, but. Um, you know, um, again, my number is 623-222-3327. If 
um, and you've got my email you or ping Deborah um, if uh, anything comes up. Um, we want everybody to just feel um, confident and you know we that either everybody's supported and appreciated most importantly. And so if uh, there's anything we can do, let me know. And we'll we've recorded this, so we'll we'll be um, doing you know sending that to, out to everybody. We'll also be doing this again on Thursday. So again, if you you know think of anything, please hop back in or <laughs> let me know what what I can do to make anything um, smooth or clearer. Or, is there's anything you think we should be doing with uh, our property or any any other aspirations that we're missing, we, we'd love to hear that too. <laughs> or we like to dream big. <laughs> well, again, thank you, everybody. We appreciate this uh, this opportunity to catch up. I'm gonna see if I have the ability to stop recording. I do. Okay.